You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's a email on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Interia. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is out for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chan, you were up. And let's go. Alright. Alrighty. Let's see. Okay. Alright. His foot is stuck and he isn't getting it free unless Amicus lets him. The younger wolf spots the one, the one foot and the other wolf is balanced on, preparing to sweep it from under. Time slows once more, but this, this time Amicus can't do much as the older wolf uses the support Amicus is giving him and swings up the other foot. Both of Amicus's paws are occupied. He can only watch as the foot sails his way. Amicus has just enough time to realize it's, to realize it's over when... Oh! Man, you got kicked! Amicus's vision flashes white, the foot whipping into his muzzle so hard and fast that it doesn't hurt at all. Instead, a numbing feeling is left behind as the younger wolf is stunned. Time is still slow, dragging out his defeat longer than he'd like. He has a moment to see his crown flash in the dull sunlight, Amicus deciding that's rather appropriate for how badly he'd been beaten. Again, Amicus is hit with not just a wave of pain, but what a familiarity. Uh, I probably need to block that a little bit. The feeling of confusion followed by squinting at the sky. It had been a good while since he'd been knocked unconscious, and he doesn't miss the feeling. He does savor it for a moment, though, having enough sense to know when that something humiliating is waiting for him on the other side of consciousness. <laughs> Seeing Magus, Amicus is reminded of what happened, and he groans internally. It hadn't been a terribly embarrassing fight. It lasted about as long as an average match, so the kick at the beginning was certainly something that would be hard to live down. It would likely be replayed on the news channels over and over, similar to Neferu's clash with Kato. Sure, he could ban it, but that would only confirm him, him to be as humiliated as he feels right now. It's been only worse as Magus approaches and kneels before him. Huh. <laughs> Your Imperial Highness, are you alright? Amicus stares for a moment, trying to judge the other wolf's intentions. That's important now. That's important now that he is sure to become a part of their delegation. But again, rather than sensing any malicious intent to further humiliate the younger wolf, Amicus only senses genuine feelings of respect. Quickly, the Emperor rights himself, taking his crown from the other man. Uh, thank you, thank you. Good spar, Magus. Indeed. Your strength was quite formidable. I very nearly lost the match at the end there. Amicus tries to smile through the aftermatch pleasantries, finally sparing a glance toward Killian. His expression is hard to read, but when he catches Amicus's eye, he gives, us, he gives him a smile. It's tight and concerned, but it still surprises the young wolf. It's as if he's trying to let Amicus know that it's okay that he lost, that he's only concerned for his well-being. Still, he can't stop his muzzle from burning slightly, even as he stretches a paw out toward the human, indicating he should join him in the amphitheater. <laughs> I see Amicus's invitation to join him and quickly make, take my place by his side. I can tell that he's embarrassed right now. Of course he would be after what happened, but I'm just glad to see what's most that he's mostly okay for the brutality of the fight. I know I'm well enough to keep my concern and affections in check for now, instead of letting everyone play it off like nothing happened. The others follow me, introducing themselves one by one to the older wolf. While Virginia had watched the entirety of the fight with hardly any expression, I was a bit surprised to see Cassius, as Cassius lower his eyes when it became clear Amicus was losing. I assumed he might take pleasure in seeing his emperor brother get trounced, but he just seems to have been made uncomfortable by the whole thing. Meanwhile, Neferu had watched with an expression that seemed on the verge of disgust while Brunus visibly cringed and shook his head throughout. As for me, I just feel relieved, a relieved weakness flooding through my limbs after the surge of adrenaline during the fight. It was a feeling of dread and terror that I had felt a few times, especially when, Am when seeing Amicus and Kato fight. It makes me wonder if I can ever watch another pug new match again. Amicus places his heavy paw around my shoulders, crunching slightly as he pulls me into his side and fixes a tight smile on his face. Anyway, we're glad to have you as part of our delegation, Magus. Glad to be part of it. I only regret that it was under such circumstances. Second, y'all, it is Walter time, or coffee time, more like. Amicus shrugs his shoulders quickly. It was, if it was under different circumstances, if it was under the circumstances of friendly sport, then I am glad to have experienced it. Indeed. 
Madge smiles pleasantly, and despite his brutality and pugny reminding me of Cato, he doesn't seem anything like that old wolf. Indeed. Luckily, the itinerary anticipated your inclusion. Actually, I'm going to do more of an accent for him. Indeed. Luckily, the itinerary anticipated your inclusion. Thus, plans should remain should remain the same. Would you like to go over the schedule? Actually, no, no, no. I was doing a, I was doing a, uh, I was doing a, an accent for the other guy. I'm like, indeed. Luckily, the itinerary anticipated your inclusion. Thus, plans should remain the same. Would you like to go over the schedule with me? Oh, definitely. I trust that you remember the way to the villa, Amicus. The drones have been instructed to keep anyone from following you and your companion. Of course. Thank you again for the bout, Magus. I look forward to a f more formal meeting tomorrow. Amicus nods his head at Magus, and I take that as my cue to bow to the old wolf. He responds by making sure to bow lower than me. Yes, until then, your highness, and his companion. With that, the formalities seem to end, and I feel Amicus steer me toward one of the exits to the city square. After we pass under a few archways, along with a few more eyes peering from windows, we emerge into the outskirts of Lux. The cold gray walls give way almost instantly to the rolling hills and jagged mountains of the tundra beyond. I feel Amicus practically deflate against me, and I feel a wave of sympathy for my wolf as I realize how much that fight must, have been, must be weighing on his mind. I raise a hand to touch his bulky, furry arm that's already, that's already around me, not saying anything for now, waiting for him to talk if he wants to. He grunts again, rubbing my arm. Mm, well, aren't you nice and warm? He turns his eyes up toward the drone above me. Give me in tech, eh? Yeah, that, yeah, that ambassador Brutus gave it to me. Ah, yes, he's an amicable man. Was your time with him pleasant? I shrug. It was all right. Not much going on considering the city is basically a ghost town. Yes, they're rather strict with their curfews and such. It's the product of being such a rebellious city. I see. We walk in silence for a few minutes, and I look ahead to the neat layout of the villa at the end of the trail. Maybe a mile outside the city gates. Around us are a few other isolated buildings and trails. Maybe something that looks like a farm. Though I have no idea what they might what they might grow up here. Still, I can't see anyone else around us. As it becomes clear Amicus isn't going to say anything, I give in. So, uh, are you feeling okay? Should we have a doctor look at your head? I focus on Amicus's physical condition, rather than on the state of his pride. No, no, of course not. Just a bit sore here and there. Okay, that's good, I guess. It's quiet again, then Amicus sighs. I'm sorry. I sigh as well. For what? For my failure in combat. I underestimated my opponent, but I promised to become stronger in the future. But why are you apologizing to me? Because as your partner, your future husband, I not only embarrass myself in these situations, but I risk doing the same to you. I absorb that, keeping my frustration at those words in check. Amicus, I'm not embarrassed. I was terrified for you, and now I'm relieved that you seem to be okay, and that it's over. That's all I feel right now. You must be at least slightly embarrassed for me, you know? No. This time Amicus sighs in frustration. Sometimes I think you only say things because it is the correct thing to say in your culture. You emphasize me being an individual and dismiss your own feelings as unimportant. I stay quiet. Gillian? Yes? Do you have anything to say to that? I don't know. I'm just not sure what to say. Is what I just said that bad? Maybe. It just feels like you're dismissing my own feelings right now. How so? By accusing me of saying things because of my culture and not because that's actually how I feel. Watching you fight, it was almost as bad as watching those fights you had with Kato. I couldn't care less about being embarrassed right now. Second, y'all, it is coffee time. Mm, delicious coffee, my mate made. Oh, well, you know the situation is completely different. Yeah. Our conversation seems to end there. The only vi the villa only a few minutes away now. I'm okay with letting it go. Too tired to argue right now. Amica squeezes me to his side again. Well, listen, the hard part is over here in Lux. Over the next two days, we can do whatever we like. I feel like I've heard Amicus say that more than a few times, and it always seems to not quite work out that way. You sure some of your duties won't pop up? Here and there, but I have arranged for them for them to call me through a through my portal, as much as I struggle to use one. One second, y'all. Let me uh, adjust my footing here. Uh, okay, there we go. Hey, there we go. That's nice and comfy. Okay. Yeah, alrighty. Hmm. Do you have things planned? Yes. Tomorrow we visit the famous natural springs in the mountains. Just us two. Ooh, excuse me. That does sound kind of nice. Alright. And Killian, I'm sorry again. I'm simply sulking after being beaten so badly. I'm not going to ruin this trip. I look up at my wolf, letting the hurt I felt a few minutes ago fade into the background. I'll hold you to it. For now, 
I assume there's a bath in the villa. Then maybe I can give you a massage like old times. Oh, well. The wolf rubs his stomach. Definitely wouldn't mind that right now. It's a date then. Indeed. Amicus stops at the door of the villa, then leans in to kiss me. And we kiss for a long time with no prying eyes around us to, around to disturb us. The villa is surprisingly lavish. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but after seeing the somewhat barren streets of Lux, I assume it would be less decked out than the pla than the palace of an inn at Astra City. Wow, this is a this is really nice. It is. Amicus seems as taken aback as I am. Haven't you been here before? This is this is where you stay when you're in Lux, right? Amicus seems embarrassed. Actually, I've never stayed here myself. This is my first visit to Lux as Emperor. My previous visits in my youth never lasted longer than a day. Cassius is likely familiar with the place, though. I turn my attention back to the villa. It's decorated and furnished to an extent that's even more extravagant than the palace. Though, to be fair, the, pa the palace isn't all that extravagant, and that was intentional. Its bare and utilitarian design is meant to appear at least somewhat approachable to the common wolf. We go about settling in, and Amicus raids the pantry in the kitchen and returns with a bottle of wine and a smaller bottle of what I assume is Verdi. It's a drink made mostly with the juice of a cucumber-like fruit, and Amicus knows it's my favorite drink on at Astra, though its pink hue tells me that it's a flavor I haven't tried before. We settle on our reclining couches, and I, which I notice are made with gold trim and polished wood. Your grandfather, Vitus. Vitus, right? Amicus seems to perk up immediately. Oh yes, Vitus. You've learned of him? I hold back a wince, forgetting that I hadn't told Amicus about how far I'd gotten in an Astra, a history, quite yet. I quickly move on so he doesn't dwell on it. And just a little bit, I just remember that he ended up getting rid of most of the expensive stuff owned by the family and gave it to the people or something. He did. About a century ago, the palace had far more decorations and murals. It was a very important step forward in the Imperial family's relationship with the people. Amicus swigs from his bottle and I do the same from mine. I can tell the pinkish color of the liquid is probably from flower petals since the drink has a distinct floral taste about it. Even though it makes me think of walking through a perfume cloud with my mouth open, the chilled drink is still refreshing, as long as that imagery isn't in my mind. Well, I guess I would have thought that might be the case for the villas too, especially in a region as poor as Lux. They don't have much wealth there, right? Well, the mines and factories are prosperous enough. The issue is how the wealth is then distributed to the people. Unfortunately, the people of Lux seem intent on voting for the most extreme politicians, who then tend to be the most corrupt. It's a self-inflicted misery, unfortunately. Uh, uh, I instinctively blanched at his reasoning, but I don't want to get into another argument. One second, y'all. It is coffee time. Mm. Well, that is a damn good cup of joe. Amicus had seen my reaction well enough, though. I should, not have, I should not have to tell you once again that you can speak freely with me, Killian. I know that, but lately I've been feeling more and more like I don't know what I'm talking about. I know, but I need to remember that Adastra is an Earth, and sometimes it feels like it isn't my place. But it is. I want a human perspective. Well, just remember, it's only my perspective. Alright. And I think that when you say it's self-inflicted, it feels like you're just blaming them for a situation that isn't really their fault. Yes, I understand that, but what I said is mostly out of frustration. It's difficult to sway these people, and at times I'm at a loss for what to do about the Lux problem. Well, make sure you stop calling it the Lux problem, first of all. I never say it out loud to anyone else, of course. But someone might hear you. We both know there can be ears anywhere. I suppose you're right, but that doesn't fix the actual issue. Have you tried building a better relationship with Lux? Of course, but like I said, the funds we send them end up in the pockets that we, that we cannot trace. Attempts to regulate or even withhold funds ends in riots. Attempts to purge unqualified politicians from the ballots ends in riots. Really, any attempts to make Lux resemble a civilized Adastrian city ends in riots that do not end until Adastra gives in to their demands. Tell me, what the hell am I supposed to do to make them understand that Adastra simply wants what is best for them? Amicus's frustration is palpable, but despite his annoyed and growling tone, I know it's not directed at me. Another reason I don't feel qualified to judge or tell him what to do is because I know I know he spends most of his time thinking about things that, can only, that I can only chime in on, which I imagine is quite is, is a bit frustrating. But he seems to be genuinely seeking my advice, so I try to. From what I understand, a lot of the problems in Lux come from its isolation, right? I would say so, yes. Oh, and I think a few centuries back an emperor tried to uh, calm the rebellious spirit of Luxians by importing large amounts of hard liquor into the city, which I can't imagine had a good effect on the people. I do not recall that policy. Did Calm tell you that? I remember that I need to tell Amicus that I'm using Kimian and Records to get a better context for an ass in history. Just not right now, with all this other crap going on. I think so. Either way, maybe you can try to address those problems. How do you usually get from one city to another? Um, well, through flight, of course. K 
Can Alexian afford that? No, most cannot. Most travel is done by automated chariots. Though from Lux, I believe you must travel on foot out of the mountains first. I frown. Aren't the chariots really slow? Well, they're twice that of walking speed, thus it would take about two weeks to travel from here to an Astra City, so not terrible. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!